Yo! Hi! How are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? Good, we did it! Woohoo! We did it, we made it happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, where are you right now? Where am I? I'm at my home in my... You're at home in Reading. How, how is it How is it over there in Reading? Is it cray or is it okay or...? Um, it's just starting to get a bit crazy because we have like 23 confirmed cases, which means there's probably... In Reading? Yeah, in Reading. Whoa. So there's probably a ton more. And so we're basically locked down, only going out for groceries at the moment. Yep. Um, which, I mean, I know that's probably what a lot of people are doing. Sure. Yeah, it just it's starting to get real here for sure. Absolutely. Well, th thanks for jumping on and uh, just sharing your heart here. So I've been interviewing just different voices of worship the past week and uh, hearing what I love about the body of Christ is everybody has a little piece. And then whenever we bring it all together, it's kind of a full picture. Yeah. And uh, so I've just been asking the voices of worship, what's God saying to you? What's happening? What's what's going on with you? So I would love to just have a little conversation with you about What's God saying to you and Jordan, man? What have you guys been up to? Yeah, it's um, it's been really it's been really amazing in a lot of ways, and then um, you're kind of confronted with your humanity big time. I think we're all kind of confronted with the fragility of our humanity. And I was sitting down. Um, I sat down at the keys because that's where creative people go. You know, you go to your creative outlet. And um, so I've been sitting in front of my piano a lot. And one of the things that um, I felt Holy Spirit really talking to me about was uh, nothing, uh, nothing's changed, Christine. Like nothing's changed. You were always fragile on your own. And there's something really, wow. there's something beautiful and comforting about that is that it's not like all of a sudden we're fragile human beings and that we need God. It's, it's almost just an unveiling of what has always been there and um an awakening of such such things of just realizing wow. re realizing our deep need of god and i had just finished writing this song um with my friend emmy we wrote a song about like not forgetting the benefits of the lord you know and um wow i think we're, we're in the bible where it says forget not his benefits psalm 103 yeah and we're like what like, what is God talking about? What does he mean by f not forgetting the benefits of the Lord? And um, I remembered somebody, uh, Jordan, telling me, um, he's like, he's like, I feel like we're the healthiest we've ever been, but we've forgotten how to be young. And what a prophet. Yeah, he's just so great. <laughs> <laughs> we're the healthiest we've ever been, but we forgot how to be young. And I felt myself like, what, what is it to be young um, before the Lord? And to actually remember the benefits of the Lord when you actually are healthy, when you actually have it all together, um, why is it still important to remember who sustains you and who gives you life? And um, because I, my, I am, o I'm only as strong as where my trust is. And so I'm, I'm realizing that I think we're all realizing that right now is my strength is only as secure as where I have chosen to place place my trust. Wow. And so I, I'm very aware of of battles that I've fought in the past. Um this is what's happening to me. I think I think it's probably happening to a lot of people. I'm very aware of the victories that I have obtained in the past because they are all important right now. Um I'm very aware of the times where I fought to place my trust in God in the past, because that is very, very relevant. And, um, and it's very important right now. Um, kind of builds I, up like a faith credit with God. Like yeah. I was already through this and you got me through this. So now I can handle this. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's very, I think, I think um, I'm, I'm very thankful that I, I know that God is real and I know that he's good. Because I think we're when you're struck with your <laughs> your fragility and you're not sure if God is real and you're not sure if God is good, that that can be a really, really bad combo. A bad combo. Um, 
And I, so I found myself really praying for people that are still struggling with the reality um, that God is good. Um, because I'm like, I wouldn't want to not have that truth deep down hooked inside of my heart right now. So I, I think that uh, me and my best friend, Melissa, were walking around six feet apart. Is she still running with you? <laughs> yeah. Melissa's still we're, hanging out with you, huh? Yeah, we're just... Uh, no way, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, you know Melissa. Yeah, I know her. Yeah, so we're six feet apart on our, our walking, <laughs> on our walking trails giving everyone else a real wide berth yeah yeah. but as we're talking she's like what do you think god is doing or what do you think he's about to do and i'm like you know whenever we're whenever i have been confronted with my weakness i have been met with his strength um whenever i've been confronted with uh, um like eternity or just that idea that i don't live forever I've always been confronted by his goodness and confronted by um, his eternal life. Uh, it's funny because those things we've talked about since we were kids and, and to have them need to be real is actually a gift. So uh, I was sharing with somebody the other day about John three sixteen. You know, that's, that's the verse, man. Yes. That, you know, yes. That's, the verse, that's the verse that we have uh like hooked on to since you're little kids or whenever you got saved that was the one that was there and i started picking it apart so then like it says for god so loved the world and just that part right there is extremely comforting because i think sometimes we can it feels like well god created the earth and then he just stood back and watched it you know Yep. Or maybe he's just standing back and watched it, but it says, for God so loved, loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish. So just that thought of like, we are the imperishable. Like what an incredible, I love that. Like, what an incredible gift that is. I love that you're talking about this because recently, probably over the past six months, the Lord's been speaking to me pretty strong about um, wonder. And it's interesting because you're saying about how Jordan said, we're better than we've ever been, but we don't know how to be, we forgot how to be young or however he said it. Yeah. And for me, it's, it comes down to wonder. And mm -hmm. I've been kind of singing about it, preaching about it like this. The Israelites didn't perish for lack of wonders they perished for lack of wonder. It's not that they didn't have all of these amazing miracles breaking out all the time. It's that they couldn't see God in the everyday manna. And I feel like there's so many amazing things that, things that come from growing up in church or church culture. But one of the dangers, or there can be dangers, I believe, and one of those dangers is that we become so familiar with verses like John 3, 16, that we lose our wonder. It's yeah. kind of like growing up around the sunset, uh, around a beach and the sun sets on, on the ocean every night. And mm -hmm. you're just after, you know, 10 years, you're like, eh, it's just the sunset. But then yeah. someone comes and visits and goes, oh, my gosh, this is the most beautiful sunset. There's a wonder there. And I yeah. feel like living in that wonder allows us to live childlike before the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Discovering the beauty of the John 3, 16s, discovering the beauty. I mean, think about it. It's happened to me. I'm guilty of this. You hear John 3, 16, you're like, oh, yeah, John 3, 16. But it's coming alive to you right now in a fresh way. Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I feel like it's it's the eyes of wonder that help us to, to stay childlike before the Lord. No, that's honestly so spot on when I when I was living in San Francisco about I think, I guess, 12 years ago now. I was going to, I was going to talk to you about this a little yeah. bit. So go there, go there. So when I was living in San Francisco, um, I, I remember very much being... Re real quick, real quick. Yeah, for those ahead. who don't know about your San Francisco, like, history piece, give, give a 30-second history piece, history okay. lesson to everyone watching. 30-second history lesson. I was part of the call with Lou Engle, and he sent us, he sent a team of eight to live in San Francisco, start a house of prayer, um, we were, we were supposed to only be there for three weeks and we ended up, I ended up being there for three years. It was probably the three you, hardest. You, Roger, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse. The squad. Uh, 
Thomas. Uh, so many people. Oh, there. Thomas, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, Monique. Wow. Missy, yeah, a lot of people, and we we would pray at least four hours a day. Um, I was I was basically the only worship leader, and so I was worship leading four <laughs> to six hours a day on my team. The village I, worship leader. I have split a, a key in half with my finger. <laughs> And it used to play by itself randomly. It was great. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, so that's why I was in San Francisco. And while I was there, I remember like really having my faith tested. And um, I'll never, I'll never forget the the moment I felt like I came awake. And I would, what you're talking about, like the ordinary becoming extraordinary. It was basically like that all the time, where I would just. Like I'd be walking around looking at birds and trees, like what's happening, you know? It was because, and honestly, it was because I had never needed heaven. I had never needed God like I did in that season of my life. Um, it was, my need for him was so severe because I felt like wow. I was consistently on the on brink of a panic attack. And so I, I felt my my deep deep need i think sometimes if we really felt our need of god without knowing him i mean that that's just a recipe for a panic attack right there <laughs> that, yeah that that is that is an incredible thought to think because your need your need wasn't just great it was unique and great mm -hmm. therefore your perspective of god was also unique and great i was just talking to a friend this morning um, I, I've been kind of putting this out a little bit about, you know, be careful of the voice that you, the voices that you're listening to right now, because, yeah. you know, the enemy's going to try to get us to focus on this when I, I kind of said it in a cleverish way, like, you know, the enemy wants you to focus on there's coming a great recession. We're going back into another great depression, but the father's saying we're going into a great awakening. Yeah. And it's interesting because talking to a buddy about it this morning, it's interesting that God calls it the great and the terrible day of the Lord. Yeah. Like I, I genuinely feel that the shakings that God allows in the earth, they're, they're, I don't believe, I'm not of the fact of the theology that God sends these calamities, but I do know that he can and he does use them for his glory. And it's the book of Acts, man. The way that the church exploded was there was terrible pressure of persecution happening. Yeah. And because the, the need for God was very, very great and very unique. Therefore, the the evidence of God became great and unique. I love that you're pointing that out a little bit. Yeah, it's, I think it's, it's actually a gift. If I could like say anything Whoa. to anybody, I'm like this, you've, we've been given a great gift. And I know it sounds, not that God has given us Corona, but like, I, I just feel like in this moment, um, the enemy like consistently overplays his hand consistently yep. and yep. constantly. It's as if he is incapable of learning. Um, but it's, it's this, it's this beautiful gift that we've been given to see our need of, um, of a savior to actually see our need of a rescue. Uh, because like you can't actually experience, uh, salvation without needing salvation you can't actually experience faithfulness without needing faithfulness you can't actually experience redemption without being in a position to need redemption so it's just so amazing like how it all backfires on him anyway it all back it will all backfire. <laughs> like that's that's will. powerful and that that also that kind of ties into what you're saying about like you know in our weakness he's made strong and any time that there's that that overwhelming sense of oh my gosh i need god he breaks in with his power i i was doing a study on on that very passage earlier this year and i find it interesting because where it says you know where we are weak he is strong that word for weak there is not our inability it's not like oh i'm too i'm too physically weak to get out of bed or i'm too spiritually weak to you know tarry for an hour it's actually the word that means no self-reliance. Wow. So yeah. when we're when we are when we are emptied of all self-reliance, it's not that we can't do the stuff, because we can. The Lord's blessed us with giftings and anointings. It's not that we don't do things, it's that we have to get to that place. And I feel like a lot of times the shakings bring us to this place 
We have to get to that place where we are completely emptied of all self-reliance. And then whenever the self-reliance is gone and it's only him, he goes, that is where my strength is made perfect. Yeah. When you finally came to the realization that it's not about you and it's actually about me, that's where my strength is made perfect. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Like, it's a gift. I love that. It is a gift. Like I, I started writing like when normal is broken, peace is coming. Like it's, it's as if it's like expect peace. You're going into like the Holy Spirit matrix writing we're, level right we're there. We're going in. I'm going in. I'm not coming out of this the same. I, come on. I, I, are, I just want everybody to refuse to come out of this the same. Like, yes. I, I think just refuse to live with the awareness of heaven you lived with before. Like, yeah. if we could just, like, I, I, I mean, this has been changing in me for the, I think the past four months with a lot of experiences we've experienced here in our community. But I'm like, I'm not going back to what my awareness of heaven was before this. Like God invited me into his reality. Wow. And I think he's inviting us as a church and as um, as a people who, who love him. He's inviting us to possess more of his reality and less of our perceived reality. And incredible. And we're going to be much, much stronger because of it. Like, yeah, couldn't, he, yeah, who would have thought that like Jacob's limp was not, you know, where, where the natural eye would see it as a disability, the spiritual eye would actually see it as a gift mm -hmm. because he has to, you know, the natural you're like, oh, poor guy, he has a disability. But in the spirit, you're like, whoa, every single step of the way he has to lean in, he has yeah. to lean in, he has to lean in. So I want to, I want to stay I want to stay with that limp, man, coming out of this thing. Yeah, I, I feel the same. I'm like, I don't want to ever feel like I can walk by myself again. <laughs> yes. What are, uh, what, are, what are some things that are getting you and Jordan? Like, all, I love spiritual stuff, but, like, what, is, what did you guys' go-to quarantine snack or meal or whatever? What are you guys, what are you guys doing right now? <laughs> you know, I have made way more muffins than I need to. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like I should take this opportunity to perfect the chocolate chip muffin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. Lynn's, my wife, no, Lynn's. Um, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Say, Is Lynn's even cooking what? Dude, she, she, I don't know where it came from. Like, she she has this Latino friend who's, like, giving her all these recipes. So Lynn's is, like, going all in bananas on, like, Mexican rice, tacos, beans. <laughs> like, just going for them, like, what in the world is happening right now? What were you going to say, though? That's so good. Yeah. And, and so, and my daughter as well, like Zoe, we were, we were at Costco the other day and my, my daughter, Zoe, she's amazing. She's 10 years old and uh, she's baking probably like twice a day. Like it's not oh very God. good, but she's like practicing, you yeah. know, she's getting there. She's, she's 12 now. She's 10. She's 10. Oh, okay. But what I was going to say is we were like this close to buying a 50 pound bag of flour the other day because she's baking so much. I talked Lynn's out of it. I'm like, babe, it's a little excessive. 50, 50 pounds. pounds. It's That's a little so much. Big. You know. <laughs> I have gone through a, a few pound bags of flour. Are you guys cost going or are you guys like grocery storing? What are you guys well, doing? We so like right before all of this happened, uh, Sprouts opened up in our. Oh, house. you guys got a Sprouts? Yeah, we got a Sprouts. We got nice. Home Goods too, but that nice. was, that was shut down almost immediately. Oh. <laughs> I know everybody in there touched and everything. Just... How's uh, How's Jordan doing with? Like, I know he's a sports head. How's he doing with all the sports cancellations and stuff? Um, he's kind of rewatching old games. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, so you know, awesome and sad. Yeah, it's just so sad because I, I heard he was watching this this old, some old footage of a game, and I, like, heard it in the back of my mind, and I was like, oh, my gosh, sports. Yeah, you know, because yeah, that, that yeah. sound, I'm like, oh, I miss that sound. I actually miss that sound because it's comforting. Yeah, because it's, it's like, it's what your husband likes, right? Yeah, it's, he loves it. Oh, we need some stuff, too. There are some definite things that I don't ever want to go back to, but definitely some things that I want to go back to as well. Oh, she, you know, said, uh, she said, oh, my gosh, so is my husband. <laughs> Tapping oh, yeah. around the world. Right yes, now. exactly. We well, are. hey, we love you so much. I, I just wanted to encourage you. You know, it's always kind of one of the, one of the soundtracks of mine and, mine and Lindsay's life, but 
dude, your record with that that came out of the the San Francisco season, Saint Francis, Praise the Lord. I mean, all your music, amazing. But that one, you know what it's like whenever you go through certain seasons and certain songs attached to those seasons, yeah, sure. and they just kind of become like life anthems. Um, all my devotion. Oh my gosh, dude! Yeah, always like, that. like, oh, dude! I lead worship with that one a lot. Um, that I mean, even this morning we were sitting there listening to Trust. We were out in prayer together, and you know, oh, yeah. just love. I, I should probably go listen to that. Gosh, they, girl, they are so powerful. There's such a richness always on all of your music, but. I can see the 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 limp, you know what I'm saying? I can see the limp in in those songs from that season, man. And they just even this morning, I actually did 15 days of live worship and prayer um, stream to like my Facebook and YouTube, whatever. And I probably sang your songs the most. Wow. <laughs> I, I actually sang "Praise the Lord" like out of the 15 days, no exaggeration, maybe seven of the days. You know, praise the Lord, oh my soul, and let all that's with me. Psalm like, 118. Gosh, man. Hey, Chris. Oh, you got some God. friends on here? Yo. <laughs> well, listen, I don't want to keep you any longer. I know you're probably quarantining it up with the fam and everything. Would you take 30 seconds and just pray over everybody who's yeah. watching? Uh, amazing conversation today. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for having me. Rachel. Yeah. Um. God, I just, I pray, if I could pray for anything, God, I would just ask that the reality, the eternal reality of Okay. Well, thank you guys and gals so much for, oh, there you are, there you are. I'm back, sorry. <laughs> it was too much anointing God. coming out. It literally froze the whole broadcast. <laughs> too much anointing. Yeah, okay, let's but try I, again. We'll try it again. Yeah. You know, he's always listening. Um. <laughs> Um, I was, God, I just, I just say again, God, I just pray that um, in the measure that we can, we can handle it, that you would pour out the reality, the eternal reality of heaven, that we would walk away from this time absolutely 100%, just not the same. Yes, Lord. And I pray for the grace to carry that reality. Um, I pray for the grace to understand that we are fragile and that hasn't changed, but you are strong and in, in our weakness, your power is perfected. Um, so I, I just, I just, I've never been more thankful that you came and you became just like us to show us that in our humanity, we actually are strong, that we act when we're connected to heaven, we actually are powerful. We actually are strong. So I just pray that you would deepen the connection yes. um, between us and heaven during this time that you would remind us that we're created beings made in the image of an invisible God that is very, very present. And it didn't just create us and then sit back and watch us flounder. I pray that we would understand our connection to you and that it would grow stronger and stronger over these next weeks or months or whatever it takes, God. And I pray a hedge of protection over everybody that's watching, over everybody, um, everybody's families. I pray that we would feel the peace that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Christine DeMarco. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Tell Jordan Thanks I love him. Me. Can't wait to get together, hopefully in Ireland, sooner than oh, later. And uh, open skies or something later on this year. Who knows? That would be awesome. Thanks for joining us, guys, gals. Thank you so much for checking it out. And we will see you all soon.